All right, welcome back to Photoshop. Today we're gonna to do a fun little tutorial on how to create this cool little action that's gonna add some style to all your photos. And what's cool about this, it's gonna be a variable. So just because it's an action, you're gonna easily be able to click on a whole bunch of different color schemes that are already inside Photoshop. But if you wanna create your own custom color schemes, it's really easy to do that. So we're gonna create an action, it's gonna do the process and it's gonna make it really easy to apply this to any photo that you have. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so we've got two different images here. This is gonna be our main image and then I've got another image over here that we're gonna try out on to see how they work. And we have this picture of our subject. Now, the first thing that we're gonna do to this image is actually tone it a little bit because it's a little bit dark. So let's go ahead and make some adjustments. All right, we are just opening that image up a little bit. Pull it back down on the highlights. And that looks pretty good. We'll come on over here to the red channel. I think I'm gonna take a little teeny bit of red out. You have to be very subtle when you do this or it will go way too far. So we'll just take a little bit of red out and that looks pretty good. Now the cool thing about this action is we can add this toning over this so we have the original color available or we can do this over a black and white image so it's just the split toning. We're gonna have it two different ways. So let's go ahead. I'm gonna flatten this just to make sure that it's simple for everybody to understand. So flatten is just applying those two layers together and making them into one layer. So let's go ahead and start this action. All right, the first thing we're gonna do here is create an action. And this action is gonna be variable when it comes to the split toning so we can pick the different colors. So let's go ahead and get this action going so we can get the first part done. So I'm gonna open up my actions here. If you don't have it, you would go to window, actions to make sure that they are available. And in my case, they're right here. So we're gonna go in here I'm gonna go out of button mode. I'm gonna come in here, I'm gonna put new action. I'm just gonna call this split tone. And mine's going into the default actions. If this is something that you use a lot, it might be helpful to add a function key to this, meaning like let's say you wanna do command F2. What this will allow you to do, instead of having an action, you can actually have a quick key that plays the action so you don't have to go into the actions. So I'm not gonna add a color to this because I'm actually gonna delete it because I already have this done, but we're gonna go ahead and hit record. I'll close this up, we don't need to see what's going on. So we're gonna create the action. It is important that you follow these steps. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create a new folder. So our new group, which is this folder down here on the bottom right. It's creating that group, we're gonna call this Split tone, so everybody knows what in the world is going on. Hit return to apply that. All right, step number one in this action. We're gonna convert it to black and white. Now, that doesn't mean that you have to use it as black and white, but we're gonna convert it to black and white. Now, if you do convert this image to black and white, you will need to manually go in here and adjust these sliders. There's no one set of sliders that works perfect for every image. So in this case, I'm just gonna leave it at its default. Then I'm gonna turn this off, because at this point, I don't want it. Step number two, and this is what's gonna give you the color, we're gonna add a gradient map. So we're gonna come up here, we're gonna click on this gradient map. We're just gonna let it use or pick the default so it's going black and white. Don't worry about what it looks like, okay? So for right now, we've got the gradient map. We're gonna leave it on that. I'm gonna do a couple of different things here. One, we're gonna change the blending mode to color, and I'm gonna lower the opacity of this down to about 40%. These are both things that you're gonna have to need to know how to adjust when you do this. Actions don't work perfectly for every image. Basically what this is gonna do is show us how much of the split toning effect that we want on the image. Step number three, we're gonna make a new action and I'm gonna lower the contrast and this is gonna be able to give us a matte look. 
And that's just a guesstimate of where it should be. I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna call this matte look, hit return. I'm gonna turn the matte look off and that's basically it. The action is done. So we can open up our actions again. We're gonna come up here and we're gonna go stop recording. I'll go ahead and close this and make it into button mode. So we should have our new action and I'll close that out. We're gonna go ahead and reset the image. So I'm gonna take all this stuff that I just did to it and delete it. So everything's gone. So let's run that action. So that action on a Mac is actually going to be command. And then I have to hit the function key, which is FN and then F2. So I'm gonna hit, so the quick key is here, 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 F2. Boom, just like that, it ran that action. So you can see. We've got the matte look, but we don't have it turned on. We've got the gradient map and we've got the black and white. So if I want the black and white, what it's gonna do is it's going to remove all the color from the image. It's important that this layer is below the gradient map because when we go into the gradient map, if we wanted to change and add color to this image, if the black and white is on top, it's gonna remove the color and this actually won't work. So it's a very important step that you have it in that order. So you can see the variable part that I was talking about is right here in this gradient map. All I need to do is click on this area, not the mask, the little icon right here in the properties. And you must have your properties up and you should always have your properties up. You're gonna see a little grayscale right here. And if we click on that, it brings up what we call the gradient editor. So I'll slide this over here so it's easy to see. And right here, we've got basics, blues, purples, pinks, so on. And then down here, we've got legacy gradients. I can open that up and it's got the older stuff that used to be in there. One of them that is actually helpful is actually this photographic toning. So the way this works is right now we're using this gradient, but we can pick any of the predetermined gradients right here. So if I wanted to try this gradient, I can click on it. If I want to try this gradient, I click on it. If I want to try this gradient, I click on it. And remember, right now the gradient is only at 40%. So if I want to intensify the color more, I can hit OK and I can come in here and I can slide that up. If I want to reduce the amount of the color, I can slide it down. So it's just a subtle variance of this gradient map that we say in here. For the tutorial, I'm just going to bring it up back to 40% so we can actually see what's happening. And all you need to do now is basically come in here and click on things and try different gradients. So down here, this one is a custom gradient that I created. Here's another custom gradient that I created. You can see down here, that's what the custom gradient looks like. If we wanted to try this gradient, we could do that. This isn't one that I made for a gradient map. We can also come in here if we like blues, they're gonna have some blues that we can look at. Now remember, the way a gradient works is in this case, it's backwards. So this probably isn't the best one to use. So let's pick one where it's not backwards. So this is our shadow side and this is our highlight side. And so it's putting this color in the shadows and this color in the highlights. Now, if I want my highlights to have less color in it, I can come in here and click on this little icon. You'll see it gives me a color. I can click on that and then I can just change what I'm doing. So if I want that same color, but grayer, or if I want it to be a little more white, but in same value, I can click there. I can say, okay, now I've changed that gradient. Just like if I wanted to make this a little bit darker, I could come in here, click that color. I could prick a darker value of that same image. And just like that, I've changed my gradient to apply to this gradient map. Now, Remember, we clicked on the black and white, so I'm gonna go ahead and apply that. Right down here, we have the black and white turned on. So it's doing the split tone, though this is a monochromatic split tone, over a black and white image. If I don't want it to use the black and white, what I can do is turn it off. It's still applying the split tone, but now over that color. I can adjust by how much by sliding this. Basically what we're doing is blending the original color with the split tone and it's gonna give us a more subtle effect. So I can do that. 
I can also come in here and turn the black and white back on, but I can reduce the amount of the black and white to get an even more pastel or softer look. So right now we've got this going on. If I wanna turn this into a matte effect, I can just basically come up here, click on this. It's lowering the contrast and giving us that matte effect of this image. And the last aspect that I'm gonna show you here is we're gonna go back to the gradient editor and we'll go ahead and open this. And I'm gonna show you how to create a custom one. All right, so one of my favorite colors as far as split tones is blue orange. So we've got a pretty good blue here, but I'm gonna click on it just to see what it looks like. And I think I'm gonna come out here to that blue right there. I'm gonna go ahead and hit okay. And then I'm gonna come over here and click on this. We'll click here. I'm gonna slide this till we get into the oranges. And I want sort of a light orange. That looks pretty good. So I've created this kind of blue to orange gradient here. So all I would need to do is come and hit new and boom, just like that, it's put that into my custom gradients. And that's gonna be saved so anytime I open Photoshop, I'm gonna have that available so I can apply it. I will increase the opacity of this so you can see what it's doing. Yeah, that's pretty cool. If I want to reduce the black, I can increase this so we're doing more of the black and white and it's more of my tone. Or I can lower it so we're getting some of that color and some of that split tone in this image. Now look, almost no action is kind of a one click and done. These are all gonna be a little bit different depending on the image. If you could please give me a thumbs up, that would be wonderful. If you would like to subscribe and get future videos as they come up, because I'm gonna be doing a whole series on Lightroom right here, that would be great as well. So we can come over here to this image that I had before. We'll do that quick key, boom, just like that. We've created our action. I probably don't like the gradient for this case, and we're gonna turn black and white on for right now. So we're gonna click that. We'll come in here, I can apply that tone that I just did. And that is not the best here. Though it's a little bit soft, we could increase that. So I can hit okay. We're gonna increase the opacity so we can see it a little bit more. Not my favorite color for this image. And then we can come in here and just kind of start trying things. So I could try some grays. Here's one. This gray is okay, but not anything I like. We'll close that out. We'll go to legacy. I can go back to the photographic and I can come in here and click some tones there. I actually kind of like that. It's a nice simple one. Not a fan of that. That one's not too bad. More of a black and white. Try this effect. If this is too much, we can come in here. We can reduce that amount. I could also remember increase the amount of the color so I can take some of the opacity so we get some of that original color in there. There's so much that you can do when you have this. And eventually you're gonna find color schemes that you like. And if you're having trouble finding colors that you like, go on to Adobe's site and check out the Adobe color themes. I will put a link to the video I have here on how to use Adobe color themes. And what you can do is you can kind of pick two contrasting colors that look good together. You can apply them to the gradient, save that as your own custom one and just like it that easy. You have two colors that you like a lot that you can use over and over and over again in your images. Well, hopefully this video has been helpful. If you have any comments or questions, you can leave those below and don't forget to subscribe. We do have a Facebook group and there's a very specific reason I created this. If you want the information, it's in the description below. But a lot of comments I get People are asking me questions and I cannot help them because I need to see what the issue is. Facebook allows you to either post an image or a video and it makes it really easy for me to give you the answer to whatever your problem is.